just pretend that you have a wall. It's a 1910 house, so it's built the old fashioned way. You've got studs, and then those studs are covered with laths, little one inch by, I guess, three eighths of an inch slats of wood, and then plaster. So to get a closer look, let's pretend this is a side view of the stud, and these are side views of the laths. And over that is a layer of plaster. And you push the plaster in enough so that it smooshes between the laths and sags down over the laths, and it creates what's known as plaster keys. If due to vibration or whatever, your plaster keys break off, your wall will fall off and you'll get a hole like I did. Here is how to fix your wall using traditional plastering and Big Wally's plaster magic. The kit comes with some blue clamps and drywall screws as you see here. It comes with some conditioner and a handy spray bottle. And it comes with two tubes of adhesive and a little instruction card that has two fancy high gloss sides. The first step in the plaster magic system is to measure out where your laths are inside the wall. And they say that they're about three and a half inches apart, if I remember correctly. So that's what I'm doing. I'm picking where a lath is based on what I can see through the hole in the plaster and then trying to measure out for uh, new little holes that I'm going to drill. I've never used the, the plaster magic system before this. You can see that the plaster in my wall, uh, maybe because it's over a hundred years old, sort of separated into layers. Um, and some of it just isn't savable and obviously some of it's missing. So, uh, the big Wally's plaster magic system allows you to drill holes through your plaster and glue it back to the lath. But as I'm going through here, I'm finding uh, some of this plaster just isn't savable because as it separated into layers, some of the broken bits slid down in between the layers and bowed the bottom of the wall out. I was doing everything I could to keep that hole as small as possible. And it just went all the way down to the molding. So unfortunately, I... I made my piece with having to pull the molding off, which you can see is already kind of sticking out on that vertical piece there because the wall is so bowed and has been bowing, I think, in this location over time. Um, it's the bedroom, I think, over the years, the decades, uh, people have had beds there pressed up against the wall or headboards and that put a lot of pressure on the plaster. Um, our bed is sideways against the wall and that hole is where my foot sometimes went so I got a little plaster under the bed quite a bit anyway as it was pushing the plaster out at the base of the wall all that dust between the layers um, I just had to pull it off so so that I could put new plaster in and get it flat so I'm doing a little cleanup here and right here I'm pushing the keys out from between the laths that's important you have to have it completely clear for the new plaster because it has to get squished in between the laths so it can sag down on the inside of the wall just a little bit and create sort of a grip to hold the new plaster onto the laths. So let's talk for a second about the drill bit. You're going to see me come back into frame here and drill some more holes. This is a 3 16th inch masonry bit and the purpose of using a masonry bit is so you don't drill holes straight through the lath, just through the plaster. So part of the system includes this plaster conditioner, which adds some moisture and possibly some adhesive, some light adhesive into the uh, plaster holes and also onto the lath, just so that uh, the dryness in the wall doesn't suck all of the moisture out of the adhesive and prevent it from adhering and, and drying properly. So let the conditioner dry. And then here I am shooting with a caulking gun, the Big Wally's Plaster Magic 
adhesive into the wall. The next step is to use drywall screws and these blue plastic discs to essentially clamp the plaster back against the lath, firmly against the lath, and you can see that it's actually causing a bunch of this adhesive to squeeze out of the remaining holes in the wall. So this is going to ensure that we have really good contact between the plaster that we're trying to save and the laths, and it'll take the place of the sagging plaster keys that I talked about earlier. It isn't necessary to fill every hole that you've drilled with a little clamp. The holes are really to get the adhesive into the wall. And as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm going through and testing the wall. You can see that by pushing it to see where the wall moves. And I discovered here on the left-hand side of my hole that the wall was still moving. The plaster was still sort of dangling away from the lath. So I drilled some more holes and I'm adding some more clamps uh, and some more adhesive, obviously, to the wall. And here's the cleanup. I managed to keep a lot of plaster dust off the bed just by keeping things clean. And in the rubble, I found a chunk of plaster with a big blob of horse hair in it. This house, as I said, was built in 1910, and at that time they were still mixing plaster with horse hair, I believe, so I've read. So let's talk a second about the plaster that I'm using. This is the scratch coat or the sand coat. I've mixed play sand with plaster. Here is the plaster that I use. And what's nice is it smells like pickles because this is a pickle bucket. I'm just using a putty knife, which I happen to have on hand. And I'm trying to push enough of this uh, sandy plaster through the laths so that, as I was saying earlier, it sags on the inside of the wall and creates what are known as plaster keys that hook the plaster onto the lath and make a solid wall until 90 years from now when someone else repeatedly pushes on the plaster with their foot or something and causes it to break down. That little plywood area is holding the laths in place for a new electrical box that's in the wall here. I am slowly rewiring the house. Here I am adding more of the scratch coat, trying to get it up to reasonable levels so that I don't have to use too much pure plaster for a, a skim coat or finish coats, whatever they're called. The mix is slipperier and thinner than peanut butter. Um, but not too much because you don't want it to sag and run off the wall. You want it to stick. So I just, you just alternate adding water and adding plaster until you feel like it, it's something you can work with. I'm trying to leave it a little bit indented just so I don't have any funky sandy lines. And this is, I believe, why we call this a scratch coat. I scratched some lines in this so that the finish coat has a little bit more to adhere to. Here's just a little moving view. There's my electrical box. And you can see all that old paint from the molding in the shot I just panned through. And those cracks you could see underneath the um, blue clamps indicate just how much I'm pulling the wall back to the lath and how much it's been pushed away from the lath by the broken bits in between the layers of plaster. And then we just have a couple of shots of the scratch coat as it dries. So that's part one of how to fix your wall with Big Wally's Plaster Magic and traditional plastering. If you want to see the rest of this project, please click on part two of our plastering video and subscribe to Project Happy Life channel on YouTube if you like, and leave a comment below if you want to, and make it a good life. Thanks. Bye.